Hey, what's up everyone? How are y'all doing and how is self-isolation? I've heard it's very rough for some people. Some people find it like a normal day because they don't go out as much anyways and some people can't stand it. And if you need a place to steam yourself, make sure you head over to the comment section and write how are y'all feeling. I will be glad to hear it from you. If you are new to the channel, this is how things work. I've picked five articles from various places that I found the most interesting and the most enjoyable, the most useful, the most something, whatever. And I'm presenting them in a ranked order. Normally I choose articles that are on topic of chemistry or health, but last month has seemed to revolve around the COVID-19 epidemics, or rather pandemics, spoiler alert. And without any further ado, I wanted to devote a special video to that, so here we go. At number five, I've put this interesting piece of news. Coronavirus is officially a pandemic. Back in January, a random guy said something like this. I wanted to do a video on intermolecular bonding, but there has been an epidemic of a coronavirus, if you haven't heard. And since then, the epidemic has taken up a gear and now it's a pandemic. Or it is, officially, since March 11th. The general director of the World Health Organization has declared it official on the normal press conference. And if you want to check out the transcript, I will put a link in the description, but yeah, now it's official. At number four, I wanted to give a little shout out to the hardworking scientists who have found the structure of the virus's protease enzyme. What a protease enzyme does is it takes a large protein and it cuts it into smaller bits. Now that we know the structure of the enzyme, we can create inhibitors that are going to stop the action of the enzyme. Fun fact, some HIV medication have the exact same mechanism. Although it will take time before we find a compound, test it, and license it, so who knows when we will get the next medication based off, based on this mechanism. At number three, I have put the article that is discussing the reuse of old drugs to fight the COVID-19 infection. A couple of weeks back, chloroquine, an anti-malarial drug, seemed to show great promise because it reduced many of the symptoms in patients who were infected with COVID-19. But a couple of weeks later, and the FDA still hasn't approved officially the use of chloroquine to treat this infection. Before you start self-medication with this drug, keep in mind chloroquine has an off-label use in patients who are experiencing arrhythmias. So you can have some pretty serious adverse effects if you are taking this on your own. So please, please consult your doctor before you start taking this. It's not a joke. Also, some HIV and Ebola medication that have not been so successful in the past are being tested for this infection. I mean, those are viral infection, this is a viral infection, so it might work this time, who knows. But the trials are still not over and they are still not officially approved. At number two, we have the big scandal and its main star is ibuprofen. This was very confusing for everyone because at first the World Health Organization forbade the use of ibuprofen and then later they came out and said it should not be avoided as a part of treatment because there is a lack of evidence that suggests it causes serious side effects in patients who are experiencing COVID-19 symptoms. Now you might know this, but if you don't, Ibuprofen is a member of the non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs and as such it is very efficient in relieving symptoms like fever and joint pain, which is kind of what coronavirus does. So if we can use it, it's very good. If we can't, it's very bad. So, But if you are reluctant to use ibuprofen, there is a substitution in the form of paracetamol. Feel free to use it if you don't feel like using ibuprofen till we get more evidence on this. 
And at number one is my MVP of last month, which is a research conducted by the University of Texas. And it's saying that the coronavirus is spreading much faster than we previously thought. How much faster? Well, the research says it takes four days since the time it gets inside the body to the time it's capable of spreading to the next person. And the weird thing is that sometimes patients don't even exhibit symptoms and they are still transmitting the disease. Precisely because of this factoid, the use of masks is highly recommended. It is not pretty, it is not pleasing, but it is effective and if you want this thing to go by the time your summer vacation comes, do it. Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can! Just do it! That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button. If you have something to say, if you think I might have left out something important, please make sure you leave a comment. Share it with your friends so they can also get the information and I will see you soon in the next one.